two and a half hour presentation. There will be points in the presentation where I'll stop and you can ask questions. So we're going to get right into it. First thing is, what is internet marketing? So there's a difference between selling and marketing. That's one of the things we're going to talk about. Internet marketing, this is it right here. Here I am, buzz right here. Putting products in front of people who want to buy them. That's basically internet marketing. I'm going to give you an example. And now my monitor. Okay, so let's say I know somebody just got engaged. And you'd ask me, how do I know if somebody just got engaged? And how come my monitor is working? There we go. One second. Move this over a little. <clears throat> this is Facebook. And on Facebook, one of the options for targeting in the advertising system is people who mark that they're engaged. So this is just in the United States. We've got almost 31 million people. Wow. So in about five seconds, I can find 31 million people in America who are engaged. And then I can divide them up between men and women. I can divide them up by age. I can add other interests on top of that. For example, OK. So I'll show you an example in a second. So now that I know that I can find my audience, let's say. Mark, are you going to share these uh, slides with us? Or? So I'm recording the video over here. It's going to be on Facebook also. And it should all be, you should be able to see everything in the video. And then afterwards, I'll get it edited and I'll put the slides in. But for now, that's what we're going to have. So let's say I targeted people who just got engaged, for example, men that just got engaged, they like video games with, that are between 21 and 45. And I put this shirt in front of their face. That's marketing. And that's internet marketing right there in a nutshell. I'm not selling anything. I'm not talking with anyone. I'm not pushing anything. I don't have to pick up a phone. I have to find products and find the audience. <clears throat> that's the whole challenge. That's the entire course that I'm going to spend 21 hours talking about it and answer in the support group and another something like 10 or 15 hours of other videos that are pre-recorded, all about this, what I just talked about right now. And using this method, I sold over a million dollars of these t-shirts. And a little bit later, I'm going to show you the numbers, I'm going to show you how many shirts I sold and how I crossed the million dollar mark. Okay? So that's marketing and not selling. And everyone knows selling, you walk into a shoe store and they say, new, what are you looking for? And they start pushing the shoes on you. Marketing is that somebody put an advertisement somewhere for those shoes, and I said, I really want those shoes, and I know where to buy them, and I walk in the store and I say, I want those shoes. That's the difference between selling and marketing. Here's another example. So this is from Amazon, which uh, a big chunk of the course is going to be talking about selling on Amazon. And you can see this is one month of results over here. This is even 18 days of results where there were 13,539 units ordered, $252,000 in sales, and this is all marketing. So the person who sold all of these, this is in the screenshot for me. I have other screenshots of my own, but this one is mine. The person who sold all of this didn't sell anything. It sold itself because there's already a website called Amazon. There's already a whole system built around Amazon. And this person, and me, and soon one day, you, will know how to tap into the system, put a product in there, and it'll sell itself. So what is this product that's sold so much? It's this right here. These are replacement toothbrush heads. It might seem like a really silly thing, but if you have an electric toothbrush, there's no reason to buy a brand name, as long as the Chinese version is a good quality. And so this guy, or whoever these people are, Sonafresh, I actually bought these. They came in with a private label, that's what it's called. A private label product that's made in China, and I'll show you in just a second. Here, for example, this is where you find it, in Alibaba. Uh -huh. Okay? So here you find it for Alibaba. If you order 50 boxes, <laughs> depending on how you negotiate, you're going to be between a dollar and three dollars a box. There's four in a box. And you're going to put them up there on Amazon, 
People are already looking for these. All you have to do is give it a different name, optimize the listing, which is something we'll talk about in the course. And just because people are looking for that product, they're going to find it. And they're going to buy it. You don't have to sell anything. You have to find what's going, what's, what, where there's demand, and then you have to find the source for it. Okay, I just said that right now. So, the secret to doing, to making money online, the thing that people get wrong all the time, and the reason people fail all the time, Oprah's going to tell us, is supply and demand, don't create it. So what does it mean to supply and demand, don't create it? So right, if I'm trying to create demand, let's say I am an artist, and I make some crazy artwork, and I go to people that love art, and I say, don't you want my art? That's trying to create demand. But if I'm supplying demand, let's say that I make a very niche product. I make a certain type of artwork, spinning Kabbalah 3D artwork, and there's a group that's fanatic about this stuff. So then if I put my product in front of that group, they're going to buy it. That's what we're doing. We're supplying demand and not creating it. <clears throat> Online sales are increasing every year. Everybody knows this. There's actually a store in the Shook that I buy from, and the guy's going out of business, and I said, what's going on? He said, everybody's ordering online. I don't know if that's, that's really true, but he feels like he's going out of business because everyone's ordering online. But the truth is, it's, grow it's growing every year. It's going to continue to grow. So you're not behind the wave. You're on the wave. And I can tell you, because I've been doing this for 18 years now, every year there are more and more opportunities. It gets easier and easier to make money online. This is the trick, <clears throat> supply and demand. So we're going to supply where the demand already is. Okay, we have two ways of doing it. The first is to find items in demand for cheap. And those are the toothbrush heads that I showed you before. The second is to drive cheap, pro cheap, cheap traffic to your product. So let's say you found a product um, tennis balls. Let's say, for example, you found tennis balls on Alibaba in China. You can buy 100 for 50 cents. So you, you want to sell 100 tennis balls for $10 or $20, which is a great deal. But people aren't really interested in it. You know there are people that are interested in tennis. So if you can find the traffic cheap enough on Facebook and you drive that traffic to your website, it doesn't matter, you can send 100,000 people a day. It's, as long as it's only costing you 10 or $20 to send those 100,000 people to your site, then it's fine. If it's costing you $5 a person, then the product's not gonna work. So either we're going to supply the demand, like I showed you on Amazon, or we're gonna find cheap traffic. Can you explain what you mean by cheap traffic? Um, well, I'll just explain it, I'll explain it again. Traffic, when, whenever you see an ad and you, and you click on it, you're somebody else's traffic. Uh -huh. That person is paying. How come Facebook is making so much money? Because people are clicking on ads. You probably never clicked on an ad on Facebook, or maybe clicked on one. But there are a billion people on Facebook, and people spend two or three hours a day on average on Facebook. So amongst that amount of people, there are billions of dollars of ads being clicked and it grows all the time. So if you have an ad, let's say I'm running an ad, let's see if I can find it, go back and find the product here. Okay, so let's say I'm running an ad to this. And every time somebody clicks on this ad, it costs me a dollar. And a thousand people clicked on it in one day, it cost me a thousand dollars. I didn't sell anything. I just lost a thousand dollars. Let's say a thousand people clicked on it, it cost me 10 cents then that's fine with me, 10 cents I can afford. Let's get 10,000 people clicking on it. Let's get 100,000 people clicking on it. It's still not costing me so much money. And amongst those 100,000 people, I'm gonna get somebody who's going to buy. And then you measure how much did it cost me, how many sales did I get, and then it also might be a matter of changing the ads, changing the targeting. That's cheap traffic. And there's lots of cheap, cheap traffic out there. There's also lots of expensive traffic out there. But 
Are you going to say how to do the cheap traffic though? Yeah, of course. Um, I'm not going to talk about it too much tonight. Now is more an overview of making money. But in the course I go into, there's two modules where we talk just about traffic. Okay, so this is important to know that there's no easy way to make money. Just what I explained to you right now wasn't simple. I mean, for myself to figure it out took me a long time, lots of trial and error. And to find the right product and to find the cheap traffic and to find everything that comes together and to have it last for a few years, it's a hard thing to do. So it's, it's no, there's no gimmick here. This course is really about finding products and selling products. And the challenge is finding the product. That's really the challenge. Finding the product cheap enough that people want to buy. Once you do that, it's like digging for oil and the oil just starts to float. Until then, you're just digging holes in the ground until you find the right thing that works. So we're going to talk a lot about researching products, how to find products, how to market products. <clears throat> so all of the methods that I teach, they take time. An average, let's say, two months before you'll make your first sale. You'll probably make it before, but that's an average. So nothing here is instant, and nothing's going to happen within five minutes. Well, that's not entirely true. There's some stuff I'll show you later that you can do right away. But for the most part, it's going to take time. There's two things that you need. You need skills, and you need knowledge. So skills, we don't have, most people don't have so many skills. And the knowledge, I'm going to give you in this course. So the, the knowledge you're going to get, the skills, some of the skills you're going to develop in the course, and some of the skills I'm going to teach you how to outsource and hire people to do just about anything you want to do. So you don't need to learn, for example, Photoshop or PHP programming or anything like that. Okay, so that's what the course is about. Now is the time to ask me questions. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, I'll take breaks in between so you can ask questions. Um, I have a general question, guys. Okay. Um, throughout the course, are you going to be talking about the specifics of the logistical interface between getting something from Alibaba to some warehouse, mm -hmm. connecting with the fulfillment guy, and like the sort of the whole thing, thing like us, the, the whole process? process. Right. Yeah, because for example, I buy products from China and send it to the states. I'm not in the states, so I send it to a pre-fulfillment center. They process it for me, and then they bring it, send it over to Amazon. Yes. I, I just wanted to, you know, confirm if I understood. Yeah. But you, you're saying, like, the demand is already there. Absolutely. So the the customer is already there. So just find a way to get your product to them. Yeah. Like not to invent but something. Not every product. You know, As a, there might be some product that nobody wants to buy. You might think it's great, but nobody wants it. So yeah, I, I answer in a second. Yeah, sure. Let me just finish answering the question. So, the trick is finding the product that people want. And finding the product cheap enough to make a profit, because there's lots of fees along the way. And, far, or finding something, if you're going to go off of um, Amazon, for example, and you're just going to have your own website, finding the traffic, traffic cheap enough to sell the product. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Zero, in the back and then Zero. <coughs> so the, one of the first slides you showed was Facebook about uh, having the ability to get granular in terms of who's engaged. Right. That's available to anyone or you have Yes. To, uh -huh. Everyone on Facebook has a private advertising account and you didn't even know it. You'll see on the left side of the screen it says ads. You click on it, you put in your credit card, and you already have an ad account. Everyone that has a Facebook account has an ad account. Okay. What we're going to use is a business account because with an ad account you're very limited. You're allowed to basically advertise one or two products. You go beyond that, and they're going to ban the account. With a business account, you can set up multiple business accounts, and you need to track all the products with a pixel, and you need different pixels. So it gets kind of complicated, but it's available to everyone. You can go very deep, very specific. There's all kinds of tricks with the Facebook advertising. Zima, you want yeah, to say uh, You know, it's funny, but tennis balls, I wasn't aware of this, that dog owners buy tennis balls. <coughs> Because their dogs chew up these tennis balls, so they have to get cheap tennis balls. And how would you know, like, how would you get to figure that out if you're the one selling these tennis balls? Because you, you think you, that you, you, you're, you're, you're not going to know that. 
you, you probably see it in the comments on the ads. So you'd run ads for tennis balls, and somebody who likes to play tennis also has a dog and says, well, I would never play tennis with these, with these balls, but they're great for my dog. And you might be offended by that, but then you realize, oh, that's an entirely new market. That's, a, that's one of the nice things about this, this type of marketing, is that people will leave comments, and you can interact with your customers, or your potential customers, and say, well, you don't like this, what did you want? And they say, I want glow-in-the-dark tennis balls. That's what I'm really looking for. You say, no problem. Five minutes later, you say, is this what you want, because you found it on Alibaba? And they say, yeah, that's what I'm looking for, so you sell them the tennis balls. Okay, let's keep going. So I'll tell you a little bit about me and how I got into this whole thing. This is a picture of, of me, who recognized me. And that's my family there, my wife and my kids, this summer. Just so you, you know who I am and, and uh, my family. So I started studying at Rutgers. I started in 1988. And at the time, the internet was just starting out, like the public internet that we all use today. We used this thing called links, and this is what it looked like. This was the this was the internet. We just you had to click. You didn't click. You just put in a number, pressed space, and that's how you got through the internet. That's how you got through the internet. The email was a, a brand new thing at the time. I remember friends at the university. They said you have an email account. I said what's that? They said you send mail for free. Like well, how do you send it for free? You write a letter, and then we get it. I said what about a stamp? No, you don't need a stamp. You need an email address. So it was right there at the beginning. Then I went for a year to study in Edinburgh, and that year, the visual internet started with Yahoo. And I remember coming back to Rutgers, and I was amazed that we didn't have text anymore. Now we had this visual internet. Then I started going to graduate school. I went to graduate school at Princeton. And I came here to the Hebrew University to get a PhD in Islamic studies. I became the editor of the Jerusalem Studies in Arabic and Islam at the Hebrew University. And then, after many years at the university, I said, okay, I've got to make a living. This isn't happening. And I taught myself computer programming and got a job with a company called Versaware. And they made the Kindle before the Kindle. And unfortunately, the company went out of business. And then I got burned out with all the pressure. I worked there for two years, pressure in the startup, so I started teaching spoken Hebrew, and I taught challah baking, and then I discovered eBay. And that's when my internet marketing really began. So I started actually in 1999, but I opened a different account because I made a lot of mistakes and they shut down my first account. So that's one of the things that you'll learn from me is how to avoid these mistakes. Basically, every major company online has shut down one of my accounts. Google, Facebook, everyone, because I always push the limits, I go too far. So I'll tell you, this you don't do because this you'll get banned. This is okay, you won't get in trouble there. So I started selling on eBay. I sold for many years on eBay probably until like 2007, and then I started getting into other things, and I was selling products, all products made here in Israel. I'd find local artists, put them on Facebook. i oh, sorry, on, on eBay. So what I was doing is, since I'm in Israel, and there's Jews and Christians around the world that want these products, I was supplying the demand. I was finding products that people couldn't buy in a store in the States or Australia or Canada, wherever they were buying from, putting it on a platform like eBay, the traffic was coming in, the sales were going, and all I had to do was find the products and ship out the products. Eventually, I moved off of eBay, this is my own site, Jerusalem and everything, and I took the same products that I was selling on eBay and put them on here in order to avoid the fees and give myself a little bit more freedom. And this is what I was talking about before. So when you're on eBay, you're getting all the traffic from eBay. You can spend money advertising on eBay, but there's no reason. Um, part of this course is a bonus session on eBay that's been pre-recorded, and there I'll explain to you which, what, where to spend money, where not to spend money on eBay. When you have your own website, now you've got to drive traffic, because opening a website is just like opening a falafel stand in the middle of the desert. 
nobody's going to find you. If there's no roads and there's no signs, I guess now we have ways, but even then, if there's no way to get to you, you're just totally isolated. So the same thing with the website. There are millions and millions of active websites that nobody ever finds. You have to make some type of effort. You either have to start reaching out to people and say, here's my site, tell your friends about it, tell your community about it, or you have to pay for advertising. And that's where the cheap advertising comes in. So if I can send targeted cheap traffic to the site, I'm going to constantly make sales. Right now, I don't spend any money on advertising on this site. It's all organic traffic. I get sales all the time, and I'm always amazed that people even find it. Because for years, I just ignored the site because I started working on other projects. Then, around 2006, I got into this thing called Google Cash, which is now banned by Google. And I can tell you because they banned my account because I was doing this. So Google Cash was, you would make an ad Let's see if I have an ad here. Um, no, okay. I want to show it later. So you make an AdWords ad, a simple text ad, and when somebody types in a search in Google, this ad shows up. And when they click on it, it takes them to JDate or GoDaddy or one of these other um, websites through an affiliate link. So when somebody makes a sale or makes a purchase, I get a commission for that sale. That was Google Cash. I didn't need a website. I didn't need anything. I just needed cheap, cheap traffic. So this is a, a screenshot. This is from my account. You can see my name up there. This is from, I think, 2006. I'm pretty sure that's when I was very into affiliate advertising. So you can see here's an example. I was running ads for 1-800-CONTACTS. It cost me $30 to bring in $438 in sales. So that's an example of how it works. <clears throat> as long as you can get the, tra the traffic cheap enough, you can see 20, 27,000 people saw the ads, 312 clicked on them. I paid an average of 10 cents an ad, and it brought in, I don't know how many sales that was there, but probably, it could even be five sales. But it was five sales of contact functions, however much they were paying, 30% to 40% of the sale. This is called affiliate advertising. People are still doing affiliate advertising. The Google Cash thing, you're not allowed to do. You need to have a website. So you can do the same thing. You can build a simple website. I'm going to show you some examples in a little bit. <clears throat> and send cheap traffic to the website. People see an ad, they click on the ad, and you get paid the commission when they make a purchase. Then I started getting into making my own software. I said, okay, I've got to find better ways of making money. That's kind of how it always is. I'm following the trends. I'm constantly looking for new things. So I made the software called Trackback Collector, which no longer works, but I was selling it for $100 a piece. I sold about 300 of them, and then Google didn't like the software so much, so they started blocking it, and that was the end of that. But then I said, okay, I gotta come up with a better idea. So I came up with an idea for a startup. This was my startup, but somebody else borrowed the idea and sold it to Google for $100 million. So the startup was a visual search engine. And in 2004, 2005, I had meetings with all the venture capital firms here in, in Israel. People were calling me. Like in the beginning, I was calling them, then they started calling me. And I had meetings, sometimes three or four meetings a day in Herzliya, all about this visual search engine idea. It was a shopping search engine, so you would put in one product and it would find similar products. And you could narrow it down by color and by shape. And you're not allowed to sign, they, don't, they won't sign any agreements when you meet the venture capitalists. And very conveniently, one of them was an investor in this company, and he just told them, you, so these guys were making a visual search engine, but not for products. And mine was totally focused on products. And whatever, I'm not worried. I, I, I let it go a long time ago. But that was, that was an idea that almost worked out. I had a million dollars in funding for that startup. They had 20 million though, and then the investors pulled out. Then I heard about this site called Plenty of Fish. I did a little bit of editing for some of the religious people here. <laughs> 
Um, <clears throat> and this is a free dating site that just took off like, like crazy. Now some of these things are flukes. Imagine if this is a fluke. I don't know if you heard about this guy, Marcus Friend, I think is his last name. He sold the site for $575 million. And he was the only one, he was the only employee for a long time, he was the only owner. He started this free site, and if you, ever, if you look him up online, he has the funniest interviews. He has like this little corner in his apartment with an old rundown computer, and he says, this is plenty of fish. <coughs> I don't think it was really true, but it, it made for entertaining interviews. So I heard about this before it was sold. It was making $10 million a year, and I said, okay, I've got to figure something out. And he actually wrote on his blog, he said, if I had made a free employment site, I could make 10 times the amount of money. So I went and made a free employment site. Called it findajobarady.com. I sold the site already uh, four years ago. This is the site, it was competing with Monster.com, <clears throat> and I had it filled with jobs. I had millions and millions of jobs on the site, and it was just making money from these ads. So this is what I was talking about before. When you saw before that I was making money from the affiliate advertising, I was paying for ads in places like this. So let's say that I would run an ad <coughs> for Monster.com. And I would get paid, if somebody signed up for Monster.com, I'd get paid $50 or whatever it was. My ad would appear here, and then I get paid the affiliate commission. So this site was filled, these links that would be here, every time somebody clicked on a link, I was getting paid. They clicked on the ads, I was getting paid. And then I figured out a way to populate the site with jobs, where every time someone clicked on a job, I got paid 10 cents. And that's when the, start, the site started really making money. So then the challenge was to get ranked in Google high in the search engine results. This is called SEO, search engine, search engine optimization. So here I was, back in the good old days, number four for Google Jobs, and I was showing up for thousands of jobs. When people come to the site, they click on a job, I get paid 10 cents, was making $10,000 a month, and I didn't have to do anything. Then in 2012, Google said we're cracking down on SEO, and my results ended up so far down the bottom <laughs> that I had to sell the site. It wasn't making money anymore. Okay, so then I decided if that's the case, I'm going to start doing SEO work with affiliate stuff and make sites that I don't care if they disappear. I'm just going to build hundreds of sites and I'm going to do everything that I'm not allowed to do. And if Google takes it out, it doesn't matter to me. It's no big deal. So I started building hundreds of these sites. I didn't build them myself. I outsourced it to people. I hired people for $5 an hour. And they would build the sites for me. And they would do the SEO work. And that worked for many years. These were the sites that I was building. You can see, very simple. I had people writing these articles, building the sites for me, putting in the ads. I would take a product. So this product is called Vision Without Glasses. I'm not sure if I have it later on here how much it pays. It costs $37. So you can see, they come to my site, they click here, they click there, they click there, and it would take them straight away to someone else's site. The site's called Vision With Glasses. And you can see if I go back a minute, mine's called Vision, oh sorry, Without Glasses. Vision Without Dash Glasses. So you go to Vision Without Glasses, wherever it is. Yeah, lots of people are playing this game here. Mm. Everybody's doing the same thing. And you come to the sales page, and you put in your payment, and then I would get paid. And I don't remember what the commission is. I might have it in here a little bit later. So here is another example, App Circle Pro. And here I know I, I do have the commission in there. So they would click on this over here, the <coughs> links. They'd end up on the actual website. And then I would get paid $73 to sell. So here they're paying $14.95 plus shipping and handling. And whatever these guys are doing afterwards is none of my business. I have no idea. But I would get paid my $73 commission. So if I had hundreds of sites doing this and some of them disappeared and some of them didn't work out, it didn't matter. I had a whole system going. I had people that were building the sites, people that were writing the content, people that were doing the SEO work. And all I had to do was make sure that everybody's doing their job and go 
and check the commissions. Then I got into this course. I think the first course I gave was 2009. 2009, 2010. And eventually I recorded, had the whole course recorded professionally instead of selling DVDs on Amazon. Eventually, here so you can see, for example, there's an order. So I sold them for $96.99. You can see Amazon's commission over there, $16.34. Amazon knows how to take money. They, they, they know very well. And then I said, okay, I don't need that anymore. So I actually really lucked out. I have this video here. It has something like 117,000 views. All of a sudden, I, I put up this site, ebaydvd.net, which I'm 100% sure if eBay knew about it, they'd say you're not allowed to have a domain with our name in it. But I've had this for 10 years now. They never contacted me. I once built a, a, a website with Facebook in the name. It was called Facebook Breakthrough, which is also a mistake. You don't want to have the two Bs together, Facebook and Breakthrough. But that's a different thing. And they, within a few weeks, they sent me an, an email. If you don't take down the site, we're going to sue you. So I just changed it to FB, <coughs> FB Breakthrough, and that's all the problem. <coughs> Here, I put up this video, and I started getting sales. And I, I didn't understand. Like, I was getting sales every few days for this DVD. And then I realized that somehow, and I don't even know what happened, this video was taking off. So I kept getting all these views on the video. I posted this video to the event page as well, where it was like an overview of the course, and people would see the video. I put a link under the YouTube video, and I get sales for the course. Then I started selling t-shirts. And t-shirts were like really the most amazing business for about three and a half, four years. Now, this is a screenshot from today. So the shirts are still selling, but they're not selling like they used to. I'm gonna show you some screenshots of my sales. So this is on a site called Teespring. Here it sold 26,000, now it's on 126 um, shirts, which is a profit $273,000. Okay, now the actual sales, so each shirt sold for the, the lowest level shirt was $22, and the sweatshirts and the hoodies were $45. So I'm making the average here $27. So we take the range between $22 and $45, and make it $27, and $26,120 comes out to $705,000 in sales of t-shirts. And these shirts, for the most part, I did through Facebook advertising. This was driving cheap traffic, just like I showed you in the beginning. I was finding the people that were engaged, that liked video games, I'd stick a shirt in front of them. So a lot of these I did with sports teams, I did with hobbies, I have hundreds and hundreds of hobbies. At this point, I have at least a thousand shirts that so most of them I didn't design. I was going to say that I designed. Most of them I hired people to design the shirts. And I paid them $5 a design. Or sometimes we'd do a whole thing where they would do 50 designs and I would pay them $50 for it. It depends where they are. Um, here, you can see these are, I don't usually show people my shirt designs because that's the whole challenge. But here, here are three over here. Three freebies. In the paid course, I'm going to show you more of my designs, how I come up with the ideas. So now, these are still selling on their own, organically, without any advertising. Every day, I get an invitation like this, $30 sold, $60 sold, $47, $45 sold. They're all selling through the Teespring marketplace. Teespring? Teespring, here you can see Teespring. Oh. Do you have a question? No. Okay. So... What do you, what do you mean organically? Organically means without paying for advertising. That's amazing. Okay. I do have a question. Yeah, question was, Teespring is not your website. That's the marketplace that you guys out there. And it's called a platform. A platform. Mm -hmm. And um, people could search based on particular topics, which is how they found you without you paying for Right. So a Teespring, they also make money. Right, when, they, when they pay me, I'll go back for a second. When they pay me for one shirt, $13.38, this is probably a sweatshirt. So the sale was probably $30. Teespring took a cut, and then I also have to pay the wholesale price. This is the profit that I end up with. Uh -huh. So now, since they're making money, 
they're, at, they're promoting their marketplace. So where all these shirts are, and they've probably got a million shirts at this point. I don't know how many they have. Hundreds of thousands of them. They're spending money, paid advertising, organic, adver organic traffic, in order to get people to come and see the t-shirts. So I'm making money by coming up with its designs itself, and they're making money when my designs sell. So here I don't have to spend any money. I just have to come up with ideas. So this idea is a pre-K teacher t-shirt list. So it says in the back, I'm a superhero, I wipe noses, and I take care of crying kids, and I'm smiling all the time. I don't remember exactly what this is in the back. This is a design that I made myself. Really simple, just text. And I sold literally thousands of those. Here, yeah, this one is sewing is my therapy. So you can see that's like the trick, is coming up with a phrase. So when you have sewing is my therapy, then you go to hiking is my therapy. Then you go to guitar is my therapy. Then you go to bass, drum, trumpet, French horn, violin, and you just go boom, 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 boom. Golf, tennis, dog. I love playing violin with my dog. So then you've got like a super niche. Playing violin with my dog while drinking wine is my therapy. And you found like the most niche audience that nobody is targeting, and there are at least a thousand people that they play the violin, have a dog, and like wine. And they see that t-shirt, they say, oh my god, that's the shirt that I need. Whoever that crazy Jew in Jerusalem is, he thought of me. And they have, of course, no idea who I am. Just shows up on the t-shirt. And that's how it works, the Drive America shirt. So this is for Proud to Drive America. This is for truckers. So truckers' jobs are constantly threatened by robotic trucks made in Israel. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess you could say I'm riding the high-tech wave by selling trucker shirts. Um, okay. So eventually I moved on to Teespring. A couple of reasons. Teespring wouldn't let me sell Bernie Sanders t-shirts. Huh. And Bernie Sanders was my best friend until the election ended. Because I sold something like 20,000 Bernie Sanders t-shirts. They just sold. Uh, and it was, it said, be a walking advertisement. So the ad on Facebook said, be a walking advertisement for our candidate, Bernie Sanders. And on the back it said, here are the top 10 reasons I'm voting for Bernie Sanders. I went to his website, I took the top 10 reasons from his website and put it on the back of the t-shirt. And on the front you see Bernie Sanders like this, I put them on the front of the shirt, and they just sold like crazy. Wow. And I made a Facebook page, said, Bernie Sanders for president, had a picture of Bernie, and then I would just go to his Facebook page and take all of his stuff and repost it on my page. And I didn't even do that. I hired a guy in, um, oh, I forgot the name of the country, where is it? Bangladesh. I had this guy from Bangladesh who was working for 75 cents an hour. And then I gave him a raise to $1.25 uh, an hour, and he was really happy. And we got up to $2. He was like, just whatever you need, I'll do anything for you. So it's really, it's incredible. It's an incredible thing, you know. We're very fortunate to be where we are in the world, that we can hire somebody like that to do this work. But you have to have the knowledge, you have to have the skills, and that's what I teach. So here, this is a screenshot from another site. This is T Profits Pro. I don't think they're in business anymore. So here you can see I had $143,000 in sales, 5,428 shirts, and if you divide that, it comes out to an average of $26.50 a shirt. That's how I was coming up with these numbers. So here I had $143,000 in sales in the last year. Okay, so you wonder, now you have all this money, how do you get it? So I have a PayPal card, and I go to the ATM right here, and I take out the cash. So that's how this whole thing works. Make the money online, take it out in cash, that's how I pay for the haul here for example, pay for the food, all through the online sets. Okay, so then, after the t-shirts, which now I don't spend any money paying for advertising t-shirts, I spent probably $250,000 to bring in the, half, the, the million dollars in sales on, uh, on Facebook. So I ended up keeping about $250,000. $253,000 from all those t-shirt sales. Um, then I got into Amazon, because all of my internet marketing friends, they said, no, come on, Amazon, there's so much money to make on Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. Okay, fine, you gotta learn the whole thing. 
It was so confusing to figure out Amazon, especially from here. Um, that's what I'm going to I'm going to have a big section. We're going to have six or seven hours just about Amazon. Because I don't know if you know, Amazon just keeps growing and growing and growing. It is a monster. It's like a monster that devours everything. And you just have to keep feeding that monster and you make money. OK, a few more things about me, and then we'll take a little break. Um, this is my forthcoming book. Just so you know, I don't sit on the computer and um, try to sell stuff all day long. I also do other things. Some of you that came early, I was playing with guitar. I've got a book coming out soon. I also like to cook. Here's some of my food from, uh, from Sukkot. These are bagels. Yeah. And I make ceramics yeah. as well. Here's some of the stuff that I made recently. OK, now any questions before we take a break? Yes. About Israeli tax. Yes. No. <laughs> you talk to an accountant, I'm not an accountant. I know how I do my taxes, but I would never say anything that no comment say, but Barack told me that's the worst thing to do. I'll show you how to make the money. The taxes, you have to ask someone else. OK? OK, so I'll turn the, the lights on. Yeah, question in the back. How much time do you spend on average a day? Like, right, now, advertising? right now, I'm spending less than an hour a day. But that's because I built all these systems. Like the eBay class, I, I never touch it. I haven't touched it in years. And somebody bought the course the other day. It's from 2007. So the, the video is from 2007. So now it's, a, it's an evergreen product. I don't talk about the details of eBay. Anything on eBay that's, that there's detail, I tell people, go look it up on YouTube. I show you how to find products, how to sell the products, how to market the products, how to write the description, how to take the pictures, how to deal with the customers, how to set the shipping, all those things. So I have an introduction to the course, which anyone who signs up for the course, you're going to get that, that module. And I say it right away. The course is old, but the content is still good, and it will still make you money. So that's something that makes money all the time. I get a sale probably every two weeks, $100. It's all online. I don't ship DVDs anymore. Nobody uses DVDs anymore. Um, it's instant access. So you pay, just a second, you pay, and then immediately it takes you to the video, and I'm out of the picture. And I always send them an email, and I say, if you have any questions, write to me. Nobody ever writes to me. And I get to keep $100. So that's the best. Um, Amazon takes a little bit more work. It took a very long time. It took me about a month. A month of digging through Amazon, through Jungle Scout. I'm pretty sure I have some slides here of Jungle Scout. To find a product that's in demand, that I could find cheap enough. So I have a product that I buy for 45 cents, and I sell it for $20. It costs me another $1.75 when it reaches the States, because it has to be put into a pouch. The pouch costs me about 5 cents a piece. So I made a count that price. So we're at about $2, a little bit more than $2. I sell it for $20. Amazon takes about 6 or $7. So I end up with around $11 when, when I'm done. And there, I just have to watch the inventory. It takes a month. So by the time I order it from China, it reaches the place in Oregon to process it. And then it reaches Amazon. And Amazon is very slow. It takes them two weeks to put it into inventory. So by the time it gets there, it takes a month. I have to just watch the numbers. I usually have about 100 in stock. And then when I see it gets down to 50, I place an order for 50. And that's it. I don't do anything else. But to get to that point was a lot of work. So that's why I say it's not easy. You need to learn the skills. You have to have the knowledge. But once you set it up, this is passive income. Passive income means that I, I can stand here and give this course, and people are buying my products right now. I'll just check my phone and see if there's sales. I didn't have to do anything. I have to work for it from the point that it was set up. Then I had to work. But once it's set up, I don't have to work. Yeah. Do it with Shmuel, right? Yeah. Yeah, question. So how this, I want your advice, how this can work regarding a book that you wrote yourself. Uh, how do I market my book? Exactly. So this so, is what you're saying. So how would you do it? I haven't started marketing my book yet. It's not done yet. Oh. It's going to be how would you do it? Like? I'm going to do it on Facebook. So okay. the book, my plan 
which I haven't done yet, so I can just tell you my plan, is to find similar art, similar authors. So this is it's a memoir, it's stories, there's some humorous stories. Alternative medicine. What's that? Alternative medicine. Or self help. You're asking about an alternative medicine. No, no, no. Yeah, no the book about being on Self-help. It could be under self-help. Self ah, this, so, so for example, there are specific books that I know that people like that are similar to this. So you advertise to those fans on Facebook and you say, you like, for example, David Sedaris. Check out this book. I'm not sure. You don't have to work it out. But that's the idea, is to find people that like similar types of books and to advertise to them. The Al Carnegie. The Al any other questions? Uh, you, mentioned, you mentioned Jungle Scout. That's a website that helps you identify products where there's a big like, difference between low cost and, and basically... Uh, Jungle Scout is a, it's the index Amazon. So they went and pulled in 45 million products from Amazon. And then they pulled in the price, they pulled in the reviews, they pulled in the category, and estimated the sales based on the ranking at Amazon. And then you can go, you pay $39 a month for it. There's also a Chrome plugin that's a one-time fee. And it'll tell you, this product, this tennis ball, has 10,000 sales a day, and this is how much it's selling for, and this is how many people are selling it, and that's how you find the product. <coughs> they tell you where to buy it also? No. They just tell you where, I to, tell you where to buy it. But then you have other companies that are already selling those tennis balls. They're Everyone's capturing the market if, already. If nobody's selling something, there probably isn't the market. Right. Anymore. No, but I'm saying when you see, for example, the tennis balls, if you go to, to, to Scout Jungle, right? Jungle Scout. Jungle Scout, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then you see that the metrics for that particular product, the tennis balls. Mm -hmm. That's the total demand now for that product, right? Estimated. Estimated. On Amazon. But it's already being filled. That's a, with right. supply, right? Right, but there, you'll see there's usually many sellers. So there's a thing called the buy box. That, now we're getting into, into mm -hmm. more details, but the buy box is when you come to this, you look for green tennis balls, and the first result comes up, and you click on it, and right there is the buy button. Well, there's 45 sellers competing for the buy button. Right. Whoever shows up there gets the sale. Mm -hmm. So there's tricks in getting the buy box. Right. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter how many people are selling it, because most of them don't know what they're doing. Most of them are from China, no, and, and, and that's they have the, no clue what they're doing. And that, so that's a Google AdWords type of thing to get kind of Yeah, there's also advertising. Mm -hmm. Whatever ads you run on Amazon, they're gonna, when the person comes to the page, you're going to have the buy box. Okay, let's take a look. <laughs> General theory, there's four ways of making money. This is from the book 
cash flow quadrant. I've read every single one of these books. Most of them didn't help, but they were entertaining. <laughs> this one, he did have a nice idea. This is Robert Kiyosaki. Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad is a space book. Right. You probably wrote Rich Dad over here. So he has the EBS on, you explain this future. So EB, I'll just say, employed, business owner, self-employed, and investor. Okay, so the first thing is, what most people do is they get a job. And the way you make money when you have a job is time for money. So you go and work, and we'll pay you 50 shekels an hour, or whatever, whatever you can get, and you just put in the hours, and you get paid. That's what most people do. Another option is being self-employed, and that's making your own job. So you own, for example, a laundromat, dry cleaner, and you work 50 hours a day, and you kill yourself, and you end up making a little bit of money. If anyone's cold, you can close the window at the back. I don't know. Okay, so the nice thing about this, you get freedom. If you do it right, and you hire people, and you build a business, then you have a business that makes money without you. And that's the goal. And the nice thing about online businesses is they're already built to make money without you. The last thing, which I haven't gotten there yet, but I'm looking forward to the day, is living off of your investments. So I can kind of cross that off. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so let's take an example of rental property versus an internet business. The average investment, I'm just giving it a general example. You buy an apartment or you buy a house somewhere cheap, it'll cost you $100,000 or more. You either have to borrow the money, or you have to put down a big chunk of money. But to start an internet business, $100 or $200, and you've already got your first business. A lot of my businesses are started with less than $100. The average time to find a house, to start renting it out, a year or longer, here we're talking about one to two months before you have a business that's making money. And making money could be even making $100 a month. So as long as you're making something, it's very easy to continue growing it. It's just that first initial sum of money that's hard to do. And once you do it one time, you can do it again and again and again. I'm speaking from experience. Rental property, let's say you've got a good property, it's bringing in $1,000 a month. Your internet business really has endless potential, unlimited potential. You're not limited, you could make nothing, you could lose money if you spend money on advertising. That's really the only way you're going to lose money. Or I guess if you buy a bad product and you're stuck with that. And you can make really unlimited amounts of money. Rental property, you've got to constantly maintain it. And here we're spending around $100 a year for web hosting and that's it. And even you could do without that. If you stay on eBay, if you stay on Amazon, you don't even need that. Prices go up and down with the rental property and the internet business, how much can you sell it for, right? Depends on how much it makes. So there's a site here called Flippa. Flippa is, I've sold many websites with Flippa. And I told you I was building all these websites for the affiliate advertising. So when the affiliate advertising wasn't working for me, I sold it on Flippa. And don't ask me why, people want to buy all kinds of strange things on Flippa. So here you can see, this, he says right here, makes $1,800 a month on autopilot, no reserve, meaning whatever price you put in, he's going to take. And this already has two bids at $16,000. So he's already going to get $16,100 for this, just for this site. He'd like for somebody to spend $50,000. Wow. It isn't even such a great site. You can see the Alexa rank is very high. The lower the rank, the better, the, the better rank the site is. And you can see that there isn't so much traffic coming to the site. He did do some... SEO work. Here's another one, $15,000 it was sold with four bids. These are all recent screenshots. CertificateTemplate.net, profit making template site. Uh, I'm amazed that somebody's going to spend $15,000 on this, <laughs> but they do. So Flippa had $41 million in sales in 2016. That means $41 million of people buying and selling websites. So a website that makes money is an asset. You don't want to run it anymore? Go to Flipknot and sell it. 
can you sell an Amazon business? So let's say we, we have first aid kits, right? We decided that we're going to talk to a, our supplier in Amazon, I mean in, in China, and we're going to make a specialized first aid kit for mountain climbers, for female mountain climbers. And whatever that group, that niche needs, this first aid kit is going to have it, and it's selling like crazy on Amazon, but we don't want to do it anymore. Just tired of it, don't want it anymore. You go and you sell it. And here, this is from January. This is a great podcast, by the way, The Amazing Seller. If you want to learn about Amazon, pretty much everything I learned about Amazon, I learned by listening to the podcast here. And this is a woman who talks about how she sold her Amazon business for over a million dollars. And there's lots of stories about people selling their Amazon business. So you don't even, you don't own Amazon, obviously. But you have the, the product, you have the audience, and you have a brand name that you established. It's a private label, so it could just be called, you know, first aid, awesomeness, whatever you want to call it, it's not really important. The thing is that you've got the whole system set up and that's what you're selling. Okay, <clears throat> this progression is probably familiar to you, but we've got the physical pizza shop, <coughs> and the next level was Domino's. Domino's big thing is that they always rented the cheapest spot they could find. So they might rent uh, a space behind the building that there'd be no foot traffic. Nobody plans on walking into Domino's. And that's and they did everything delivery. So they would take orders and deliver. That was their level. And then the next level is online pizza, which I'm sure everybody's at least heard of the possibility of ordering food online without a doubt. Okay, questions before we continue? Yes? That site was called The Amazing Seller. Yes. And, and, and that's, you just type into Google The Amazing Seller. Yes. He has maybe 370 episodes at this point, and most of them are relevant. You, you, really, everything I learned, all the basics about Amazon, I learned from that site. Without it, that podcast, without it, I don't it sounds, know. No, it just sounds amazing that, uh, I, know, I, I know it's true, the, you know, that lady who turned seven, seven figures. In a couple, well, in a if you think about it, she's, make, she's making more than a million dollars, yeah. or close to a million dollars, and she wants out for whatever reason, it's too much hassle, right. and there are people that will buy it from her. Yeah. Okay, the types of internet businesses we're going to talk about in this course. So there's really two types of internet businesses. There's service and there's e-commerce. I'm going to show you some service examples, and we're going to focus on e-commerce, so just to, to separate the two. <laughs> Online therapy. Talk space. There's a, a few of these online therapy um, websites. So this is a service. They're not selling a, a physical product. They're selling a service. The person who's providing the therapy has to have some type of expertise, and the person receiving it has to have some type of problem. Um, kind of obvious. <laughs> we all have problems. We all could use online therapy. This is translation. So these are things that can be done totally online. What's that? You need it, I can provide it. Therapist in the room. Yeah. Um, translation. This is interior design. I was just curious, was there anybody who did online interior design? And here's a company called Laurel and Wolf. In case you want to do online interior design. Then the progression from that is software as a service. They call it SaaS. Software as a service. And here are some examples that probably most people have heard of. Dropbox, for example, which is online storage. And I always do the free plan. I'm constantly opening new Dropbox accounts if I need more space. But most people would probably pay because they just recently, in January, hit a billion dollars in revenue. From something, you look at this, you know, it's free. Why do you pay eight twenty-five a month? Why do you pay sixteen fifty-eight a month? And they've they're bringing in over a billion dollars a year in revenue. This shows you the power of this stuff. You know, because we're when we're here in the physical world, we don't realize what's going on online and how much money there is and how many people are exchanging services and trading things. Another example is Buffer. 
buffer does um, optimized posting on social media. So again, we've got free ten dollars and up. And buffer, it was really amazing. I was searching just today. This is a, a screenshot you can see November twelfth from today. I was searching for their revenue, and they said we have online real time revenue of our company. And this is it. This is all their sales. You can see. Five minutes ago, somebody ordered, somebody canceled, someone ordered, ordered. They're bringing in a million, $1.3 million in recurring revenue every month, and you can see how the chart goes up and up. These are quite amazing. So what do you think I'm working on? My own business. This is automated Facebook advertising for restaurants. This is my site. It isn't active yet, but it's in, in the works. Uh, I'm always working on the next thing. I've always got all these things that I worked on in the past. Once they start making money, and move on to the next thing. Yes. Do they make any money on the free accounts? Like on the I don't think money? so. <laughs> I've never seen an ad in Dropbox. I don't know. Maybe I don't think so. But um, have you ever seen the circus? There's these sticks, and somebody spins a plate on them. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's what I'm doing. The spinning, 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 spinning. Once they're all spinning, we go move on to the next plate. A lot of them spin forever, or they end up just sitting there like this. When somebody moves it, you don't have to touch it. You can have websites that sit there for years and then make $100 once a year. It doesn't cost you anything. So you either decide you keep investing on one site, working, working, working on one site, building it. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I get tired of it, and I want to do something else, and so move on to the next thing. This is for my site. Okay, so those are service businesses, and that's not what we're focusing on in this course. That would be, yeah. The Dropbox. Uh, yeah. Why would somebody pay if you can get the free money? Um, convenience. They don't care. They spend their money. Well, there's only two business. gigabytes or whatever the limit is. So somebody needs much more than that, so they can share big projects with people. Uh, exactly. And the whole group needs it. Apple does it for storage, and they end up paying. Okay, so let's keep going. <clears throat> e-commerce examples. Here's why mm -hmm. I'm focusing on e-commerce. First of all, you don't have to create anything. You don't have to make anything. And with Amazon, you don't need to ship anything, you don't need to sell anything, and you don't even need to give customer support. All you have to do is find the product and find the sourcing and set up the system where the product goes from China to whichever country you're selling it in, to Amazon or eBay, eBay you don't have to set up the same system, and it all will run itself. Okay, so let's take a look at eBay. This is my profile again. This is one of the products that I would sell on eBay. Is that painting? This is a print of a painting. These are Hebrew letters, you can't see them so well. It's called micrography. You know, tiny little letters. There's Hebrew the letters in the birds? Yeah. Yeah, you just can't oh, see it. So okay, so I was selling these for, for, I was buying them for $30, selling them for $40. So, okay. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Sorry, 30 seconds, thank you. There's a lot of talking. Correct me if I say something wrong. Okay, buying for 30 shekels, about $7.50. <coughs> Starting it at $40, the shipping to the States would cost me about 15 shekels. And after eBay fees, which were $1.75, I'd keep $27. So eventually, I moved off of eBay. Instead of selling it for $50 on my own site, I sell these all the time. So this is an artist in Jerusalem and he's very happy to have my sales, and I've got a whole bunch of artists on the site. This is, um, so one of the, you, you mentioned it before, Mordecai, right? Yes, Shmuel. Now, hypothetically, all right, if there was an artist, and he wanted to sell his painting on your website, what's the procedure? Um, I'm not interested. I'm doing too many other things. All right. I don't want to put, they contact me all the time. I don't want to put any That's artwork on the that. site. I don't want any artwork on the site. I just let it sit there. I've got inventory in my office that was paid for a long time ago. And whenever an order comes in, I go to the post office and ship it out. Right. 
that's one of these businesses that just sits there and makes money when it makes money, and when it doesn't, I don't even pay attention to it. Okay, so here's an example on eBay of a sleeping bag. This is a sleeping bag that I put up on eBay. And you can see, I, I have two pictures here. They're really the same picture. I just put them in two different directions. Because <laughs> people want to see lots of pictures. Yeah. And like, I don't own the product. Yeah. I'm not going to take a picture, so I'll just make it look like that. <laughs> so now, why did you use that yes. bag? Like, what was so good? Okay, so this bag is from drop shipping. Drop shipping means that I'm buying wholesale from a distributor who ships it for me. So I pay more than I would if I bought, for example, a thousand sleeping bags at a time. But I pay less than I would retail. And the same, it, we're, we're just repeating the same thing again. You're looking for a cheap sleeping bag that looks like it's good enough that somebody would want to buy it. If they return it, no big deal. I just put it back in the inventory and sell it again to the next person. <clears throat> So it was just through product research that I came across these sleeping bags. This cost me $4.25. I put it up on eBay for $20. It, many times there were lots of bids, so it would bid up to $40. And then after the fees, I would end up giving $34. This is the general idea. This is how you make money online. Finding products, filling demand. OK, so how do you make your first $100 online? I'm going to show you right now. It's really easy. You either go to eBay or you go to Amazon. And on Amazon, if you want to sell as a professional, you're going to pay $40 a month. You can sell as an individual and not pay anything until you sell something. When you sell something, you're going to pay $0.99 cents per sale and a few other fees, and that's up to 40 items. So either eBay, which also you're not going to pay anything until, or you might get a very low fee to list the stuff, or Amazon where you don't have to pay anything to list it. And what are you going to sell? Books. Anybody have any books? I don't know. That they're never going to read again? So you go to Amazon, you type in the book. All these people here are selling used books. You just put your book up there, you say it's used, very good, and they, they make you uh, charge a maximum, I think, of $2.99 for the shipping. So you put in whatever price you want, and you start getting rid of your books. <clears throat> CDs. I don't even use CDs anymore. I have tons of them at home. Put them up on Amazon, sell the used CDs. <coughs> you can sell DVDs, video games, clothes, hobby items, VHS tapes, I'll show you in a second, baby stuff if you don't have any more babies coming, electronics, and collectible items. All these things you could find in your home you can put them on Amazon and eBay tomorrow, and you don't have to do anything until they sell. Yes, yes. When you sell them, you have to post it to them? Yes. So you have the responsibility of posting from... Right. And the then cost of where you If you are. don't want the responsibility, we'll go back a little bit. Or in Israel. So the post costs You don't want it, you can pay $40 a month, send it into Amazon, and they'll take care of everything. So you can send them all your products. You can send them as many different products as you want. You can send one. You can send a million. As many as you want. doesn't matter. You'll pay for storage. So you don't want to send a million unless you know they're selling a lot. If you don't want to deal with the shipping, they'll, they'll take care of everything for you. But if, you just, if we're just starting off, now we're starting with nothing. Not asking you to spend any money whatsoever to make your first $100. Just find stuff in your house where you can see that there's demand. This is a book that has 10, 000, over 10,000 reviews. People want to buy this book. If you have this book at home, you put it up, it's going to sell. And you can even just watch these sellers. You'll see that the book is going to sell. OK, so here's a list of some ideas. So you're selling as a professional on Amazon, if you sell more than 40 items per month, do you have to uh, do fulfillment by Amazon? No, you, you never have to do fulfillment by Amazon. You can do you're a professional that does not do professional means that if you want to sell more than 40, and when you do fulfillment by Amazon, you're paying Amazon fees all over the place. That's listing yes. 40 items or selling 40 items? 40 items. No, yes. selling 40 items. So if, you're, if your total quantity let's is sold... Let's go back to... I think it's selling. Let's see. It says it here. 
if you plan to sell fewer than 40 items a month. So it does not go through your list. Uh-huh. And you use DHL for your shipping? No, that's from China. So what do you do with this shipping? I, I don't, so here if I was going to ship stuff, I would send it either regular registered air mail or eco post. Depends if I still wanted to get there. Depends how much it is. Okay, here's an example of a VHS tape on eBay. I don't, it doesn't have any bids yet, but people feel like there's a market for it. <clears throat> so something that you might think is total junk, there could be a collector out there that's looking for it. It doesn't cost very much to list it. You can see these are pre-owned. Okay, on Amazon, here's somebody selling their used galoshes or work boots. Okay, you can see buy new, 1850, buy used, 1420. So you can sell just about anything you own, you'll find it on Amazon. Here's a woman who makes $25 million a year selling other people's stuff. So she started selling everything she had in her house. See, items just lying around. And then when she basically got rid of everything she owned, people were like, wow, you're amazing. She said, well, what do you have? And people brought their stuff and she sold it for them. And now she built an entire business where people just bring their stuff to her. She has a team that takes pictures, that put up the listings, that answer the support questions, and makes $25 million a year. Wow. I, I, I put this up here just so you can see the potential of this stuff. <clears throat> I've never made $25 million a year, but I've made a lot of money selling online. The potential is there, and it has nothing to do with who you are, or what you look like, or where you are. It's just always finding the right products. When you find the products, the demand is always there. It's like these little you know, animals that are constantly eating they just want to eat certain things. If you give them the right food, they're going to devour it every time. You know, you drop that little fish in there, and everybody <laughs> eats it. They're like, whoa, I just made $100. Give me another fish. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. How, how many of these fish can I find? Well, there's a guy in China selling them. He's selling them 50 for $100. I'll take 500 of them. And you throw 200, and they eat them all, and they're not hungry anymore. And they're like, God, what am I going to do now with all this stuff? I'm like, oh, there's some stupid collector that wants to buy them. And you know, and then you say, oh, they're eating it again. And we're back in business. And that's how it is. This is this whole game. Uh -huh. oh, okay, so e-commerce, I've already talked about Jerusalem everything. So I'm gonna skip that. Just so you see the site. Here's all the stuff I sell. For example, all that stuff you sell. Yeah. Are you inventorying all the stuff? Or you I have all the stuff in inventory. This is a business that's been around since 2000. And I used to go to ferries in the States and sell this stuff. But I have some of the things I have some inventory. For example, the rings, I don't have any inventory. Someone places an order, I send one of the kids to pick it up from the artist. Other questions? Yes. Wait, wait, Short questions? One second, she has a question. Well, what about Amazon and Israel? I heard the, there's a problem. Like they don't ship to Israel or you can't ship, ship to Israel. They ship to Israel, yeah. no problem. Not everyone, but I bought, I bought books from Amazon recently. Oh, okay. You can buy from Book Depository, they ship for free. Do you think eBay is good for art? Etsy is the place to go for art. Etsy? Yeah, E-T-S-Y. Etsy.com. Yeah. Question? Oh, what do you keep your inventory? Uh, in my office. I have a bookshelf. These are small items. Yeah, it doesn't. These are in a tackle box. <laughs> it's just divided up into little boxes like about that size, and there's really things in there. Okay, so this is something that I was selling for a while, airopener.com. It's a pressure cork opener. If you ever come to my house for shoppers, you'll see me using it. So I was selling them for $30 with the, foil, with the foil cutter, and the company in China was bundling the foil cutter, which cost me like 25 cents, with uh, the air opener, which I bought for about $2 a piece. Huh. So I sold a couple hundred of these, and then for whatever reason, they stopped selling. Huh. Like I just was running the ads, and they weren't selling. And I said, forget it. I just dropped it, and I had a few of them at home. A few extra ones at home, and that's it. 
I made the money, the, the site's still up, anybody wants to place an order, they're welcome to place an order. But I could say, okay, I'm gonna make this work. I'm gonna find those people that want this. I just didn't want to put that much effort into it. Depends on your personality and what you want to do. So now, how do you build an e-commerce site quickly? There's two easy ways. One is Shopify. This is inside a Shopify site. This is Shopify, you can see over there. <clears throat> you get two weeks for free, and then they're going to charge you $29 a month. So that's one option. And a lot of people will start a business with Shopify because within a day, without needing anything, except for spending the $30, you have a website. And everything works. The shopping cart works, and the listing works, and everything is pieced together, and there's nothing to worry about. If you want to save money, you can do the same thing with WooCommerce and WordPress. So I have a server, I pay $60 a month for the server, and all of my websites are on the server, so whenever I build an e-commerce site, I always just stick it on the server. Let's see, it doesn't cost me any more money. So this is the same thing. This is WooCommerce and WordPress. But this is something that we'll talk about in the course. For now, I just, I'm just explaining that it's very easy to build a site. You can hire somebody on Upwork, you hire a freelancer, you say, I want you to put together WooCommerce and WordPress, make a site for me, here's my product. I'll go back to, the, to this over here, you say, look, I like this site, I like the way it, look, it looks, here's $50, put the site together for me, and you'll get people that will do it for you in a day. Okay, moving on. So drop shipping, which is something we've talked about a little bit already. This was built by a former student of mine who sold the site. Um, sold it through Flippa. So he was doing drop shipping through Amazon affiliate links. So some of these concepts should be familiar already. An affiliate link means that you're making a sale and you're getting paid a commission without ever touching the product, and without really doing anything else. So he built an entire site on gun cabinets. And all of these products, whenever you would click on the link, it would take you to Amazon to make the purchase. So you didn't have to have any, any inventory. You didn't have to deal with any shipping or customer support or anything. You just had to build a website, bring the traffic to here. So here we're talking about cheap traffic. Right? If you've got your own website, People have to come to the site. The only way they're going to come to the site is if you advertise it. Here's an example of the page. And you go to the shopping cart, and when you click on checkout, it takes you to Amazon. Did he himself answer the phone? I'm guessing he did. He has a phone number. Oh, there it is. Yeah. To get with the, you need the permission from the manufacturer. Or, yeah. No, this was through Amazon. Yeah, they'll probably have totally to get more sure. all right, right, advertising. I'll wait for the questions. Okay. Wait, yes, yes. Any question? No, no, I was just saying it's free advertising. What's your name in the back? Motion. Motion. So, he's a consolidator of product. In no. other words, these are not his products. These are not his products. He doesn't have the products. So, he created a, uh, a landing page, a web. Um, an entire website. Website. And then he did SEO work. So he ranked in Google. And he paid for traffic for people that are interested in guns. And they came to the site and when they went to check out, they were taken to Amazon. So for example, a guy is selling a gun case. Mm -hmm. In other words, these are all random sellers of gun cases. Right. It's not up to him who sold it. Just he goes He's just Amazon. a way he just people click here and goes somewhere else, they purchase it. Right, so he he's, a commission. Right, so he's just a consolidator of the web traffic. Okay. Right, hopefully. Uh -huh. That's the challenge there. The challenge is to find the product and cheap traffic. Cheap or free traffic. Okay, my yes. question is now more clear. When, that, when he puts that link into Amazon, how, instead of just linking to the page where that's purchased, how is that affiliate link commission arranged so that the credit goes back to him? So when you, when you find this product on Amazon, and you say, I want to add it to my site, you do it through Amazon's affiliate program. They'll have a special link when you join the program. 
you have a special link on the top of the page when you're, when you're logged in. You take that link, and that link is a tracking link. And it tracks who came through your site, and usually they have a cookie that lasts for 30 days, some that lasts for up to six months. And any sale that comes in at least 30 days, you get a commission for it. And so it's a completely separate or parallel Amazon affiliate program that you can use like a platform on. Yeah, so this is piecing things together. Yeah. But the, 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 the gun cases that he's selling, the guy that actually has a physical gun case, he's paying him the money? No, he has it on Amazon, and he's selling through Amazon, and as far as he's concerned, he just made the sale through Amazon. Uh -huh. But Amazon is taking a commission from that guy. Correct. And then they're taking part of their commission, and they're paying it to this guy. Okay, understood. Okay. So Amazon is paying for his commission? Amazon's paying for his commission, yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Amazon makes more money when they sell Yeah, whoever they figure it out, I trust Amazon and what they do. They know how to make money. Okay, I think it was the woman in the back of the room, remember your name, you asked me about drop, drop shipping through AliExpress. Okay, so you could take, this is a product that I sold, I actually sold it for $40, but I don't have the website anymore, so I looked on someone else's site. So, this is, what's drop shipping? Drop shipping is when you sell a product and somebody else ships it for you. They have the product, you buy it wholesale, and they ship it for you. So this is um, Minions, uh -huh. which is a kid's character, and it's pretty easy to find fans of Minions on Facebook. So you put this in front of mothers that are interested in Minions that say that they have kids. You can actually narrow it down on Facebook. Mothers with kids and the kids of these ages. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you can say mothers of kids between 5 and 12 that, have, that like the Minions and like Despicable Me and other related movies and stick this in front of them. And so I was selling these. And I was selling them without having any inventory at all. And then I was going over to AliExpress and buying them. So I was selling them for $40. This person was selling them a lot cheaper than me. And I would come and I would order them and I would say shipping takes 30 days. Wow. And then I would go to AliExpress and I would order it and instead of putting in my address, I put in the customer's address and sent the product from AliExpress directly to them. <laughs> the no, only problem with that is they don't know about AliExpress. Nope, they don't know about AliExpress. But you had a website? I had a website on Shopify, yeah. They don't know about AliExpress. They don't think to go there. You know how many products on Amazon? So I have insoles in my shoes. I have insoles that um, were special insoles that I got from Maccabi. And I saw the receipt, it was 900 shekels. So I paid 100 shekels, and Maccabi paid another 800 shekels. And then I wore a hole in them and I'm like, oh, I don't want to go back to Maccabi. I'm going to look on Amazon. And so I looked for this certain special type of insole that I need, and I found that on Amazon for $20. Wow. $20, that's like less than 100 shekels that I paid. And then I said, wait a minute, i got to look on AliExpress. And I found AliExpress for $4. Oh, yeah. And I sent it here with $5 shipping, which was like the quick shipping. So I have the insoles that I'm wearing right now, cost me $9. It took a week to get here, and there are people selling the same thing on, on Amazon for $20, and the HMO was selling it for 900 shekels. So people don't even think of these things. It's, uh, it's just, okay. a lot of the teenage stuff. Right. Just, just remember, we're talking, always talking numbers. Whenever you get an angry customer and they say, I'll never buy from you again, it means absolutely nothing. Who cares if you'll never buy from me again? There are a million other people that will buy from me again. I'm looking for new people all the time. Sure, I love repeat customers, but only 10% are <coughs> repeat customers. I'm always finding new people all the time. There are new people coming online. There are new people discovering that you could buy things from AliExpress or buy from Amazon, whatever it is. There's a constant flow. If you remember that chart that I showed you in the beginning, where the sales are going up every year, they're going up every year. We're still, I would say, at the end of the beginning of internet sales. We're not even really that deep into it yet. If we're sitting here in this class and people are surprised that 
that these sales are happening and that you can do these things, you can do that thing, because we're not there yet. There's still a huge opportunity here. Okay, so that's drop shipping through AliExpress, using AliExpress as my source. You can also now make um, stores directly on Facebook. So you don't even need a website. Here's a, I just looked for a Facebook store, and I guess because I'm in Israel, they gave me this one, and now as a hobby, to sell your rings for a little bit of money. Wow. <laughs> and um, here you go, it's right here. Like you, you, this, you make a purchase directly through Facebook. And she's drawing this in through a WooCommerce site. You can see WooCommerce is connected with Facebook, and it will draw in your products from your website and put it onto Facebook. There's all kinds of ways of bringing all this stuff together and making comments. Okay, now we're at the end of questions, but everybody asks questions. So, with any more questions before we continue? And if anyone feels like we need a break, we can take a break in, the, in a little bit. You just tell me. I don't know. I'm willing to keep going. So, so she could have done or set Facebook store, but in this case, she actually she had, she has a, Woo, a WooCommerce site right. that interfaces with Facebook, Facebook, Facebook and populates the website. Right. right. <coughs> you can have just a Facebook store. Yeah. Doesn't it cost money? No. Yeah. I don't think a Facebook store costs money. I don't know. I haven't tried one yet. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about outsourcing. So, obviously, either you can't do it all yourself or you don't want to do it all yourself. There's no reason to do it all yourself. I hire around 50 freelancers a year. Depends. This year I probably hired, I hired last maybe 25 or 30. On average, $5 an hour. So this, this is my profile on Upwork. And you can see, where you can say over here, there's my average. So I've hired, um, I had 162 jobs, spent $7,000. I hired 130 people. That means that I've rehired people. And the average that I pay is four dollars and eleven cents. And it's, it's you can see I've got ninety four reviews. There's that little piece there because in the very beginning when I first started hiring people, I hired a woman in the Philippines. I made a big mistake. I hired her by the hour. I almost never hire anyone by the hour. I always hire them per project. So she worked. She just wasted the time. I said I wasn't happy. She said, I'm leaving you negative, negative feedback. Yeah. And I ended up with that little sliver over there. <clears throat> OK, so here's a negotiation. You can see this is a guy that I hired recently, a guy in Russia. He did some programming work for me. And when he finished, I said, how much do I do? He said, $3. So this $3, um, somebody could have easily charged me $100 for it, yeah. even $200 for the programming work that he did. It's all a matter of leveraging who you are, where you are, what knowledge you have, and what skills you have. So hiring people is a skill. Knowing how to work with people, how to find them, how to negotiate with them, how to explain what you want clearly is a skill. And that's one of the skills I'm going to teach on the course. This is back from 2012 when I had people writing articles for search engine optimization. They were writing articles all the time. I told I told them twenty-five dollars for fifty articles. This is this downright insulting. <laughs> I told them get used to it because I'm hiring people for like nothing. The world is flat. I don't know if you if you know that this is uh, Thomas Friedman's book, The World is Flat. The world is flat, meaning that there are no barriers anymore. Except for the amount of the advertising budget, I can compete with just about any company out there. And nobody really cares who you are. As long as your website and your product looks professional, they'll trust you. That's really what it comes down to. There's so many brand names these days, these days that no one has ever heard of before. The insoles that I'm wearing, I don't even remember the name of the brand. I don't really care. And they're competing with people that make much fancier insoles. It doesn't really matter. So the world is flat. OK, let's talk a little bit about marketing. So, we mentioned before that the secret to making money online is to supply demand and not create it. So many times people come to me and they say, I have this product, how do I market it? I said, no, that's not how I work. I work the other way around. I know people that want to buy the product, let me find something to stick in front of their face. That's how this game works. We're supplying demand. 
You make money by supplying the demand. Right? In the beginning of the class, maybe it wasn't so clear. Now I hope it's getting clearer and clearer what I'm talking about. But you don't have to make anything. The demand is already there. Your job is to find it as cheap as possible. To find it a quality product that somebody's going to buy for as cheap as possible. And we do that by putting products in front of people who want to buy them. That's internet marketing in a nutshell. Right there. So take, let's take Buzz Lightyear. And we know people that are fans of Buzz Lightyear. We're going to put them in front of those people's faces at a good price or with some type of bundle or with a t-shirt or with some signature on it. And they're going to sell themselves. And there's two ways of doing it. The first is to find items in demand for cheap, which we've seen a few examples of that already. The second is to drive cheap traffic to your product. Now when I say drive cheap uh, traffic, everyone knows what I'm talking about, right? No? No? Okay, good. Drive cheap traffic, it's hard for me to say. That means, so let's look at the two sides of this. Let's start with the first one. Finding items in demand for cheap, is that clear? Yeah. yeah. That means that there are people that want to buy it, and I'm giving it to them, and I'm finding it cheap enough for me to make a, pro a profit. The other one is I have a product that people want to buy, but I don't want to spend, I don't want to pay the fees on Amazon, or it doesn't sell on Amazon. Not everything sells on Amazon. Something that sells on my website with good traffic might not sell on Amazon. So it's not the right place to sell it. So I know that there are people that want to buy whatever, whatever crazy product I found. Let's, let's say the, the female climber first aid kit. I know they're out there, I know they want to buy it, and I can find them on Facebook by going to the interest and finding women of this age group that are interested in climbing, that are interested in first aid. I'm going to get a very narrow group, and I'm going to put it in front of them. How much money does it cost me per product that I sell? The cost of acquisition. Right. How much does it cost me? So if I buy a product and I make $20 from it, so let's say I buy it for um, $10 and I sell it for $30, I'm making $20 from it. And then of that $20, how much money do I have to spend to make a sale? If I have to spend 10 cents, it's a, it, that's good traffic for me. If I have to spend a dollar, it's still okay. Even $10. Once I'm spending more than $10, it might not be profitable for me anymore. That's called driving cheap traffic. How much traffic? Because the, we're just talking about millions of people, hundreds of millions of people online. They're all there swimming around. How do I get them to come to me? I gotta pay for it. Can I get a million people to come to my website for a thousand dollars? If I can get a million people targeted for a thousand dollars, I'm gonna make a lot of sales. That's cheap traffic. That's driving cheap traffic. So that in itself is, is a skill. What is the WhatsApp groups and Facebook groups that on this? The cheap traffic. The Facebook groups. You can all the this course I promoted on Facebook groups. I just posted it on different groups. Uh -huh. Eventually, they're going to tell you, leave us alone. We're tired of you posting. Uh -huh. You can't. You can't do that forever. You can't just put tennis balls on the yeah. on the tennis group again and again and again. They'll just remove you from the group. And you also can't really grow a product like that. You want to start off like that? You can start off with. You can't really grow it. If you've got an ad that's working, then you can put more money on it, and you can expand the interest and you can expand the audience. Okay, we're going to take a look. They buy from a different uh, AliExpress provider. Okay, so we're going to finish up now. There's not much more left to go. Question? Yes. How do you know that the I mean, how do you know that you can trust these programmers and these the, the people that you're hiring? They all have feedback. Um, whenever I hire somebody without feedback, which is rare. Yes. I tell them, first of all, you don't have any feedback, so I'm not going to pay you until the job is over. And you can put it on escrow. Even escrow, I won't do with it. Escrow means that the money is sitting with, with Upwork. You, they're the only ones that can 
cancel it, and you're the only one, only one that can release it. So I'll tell them, look, first of all, I'll hire them only for a small child. Let's say no more than $20, $50 maximum. So you don't have any, any experience, you don't have any feedback. I'll put $10 in the escrow. And the rest, I'll wait until you finish the job. The password's on the site. I make sure I change a password so I don't give them the regular password that I use. Let them do the work. You know, for the most part, though, you want to hire people with feedback. Yeah. We're going to have an entire module just on outsourcing. I'll show you how to hire people and how to know that they're good. I've hired a lot of people. The same thing with reviews on any Airbnb or anything. Because if they don't have yeah. reviews, you can get stuck with a mission. Same, same thing. What I do is when I find someone good, I hire them again and again and again and again. I work with them for years. So when you see these hires here, those were the one-time hires, but I kept hiring them again and again. Like that guy Max, I've worked with them for like three or four years at this point. And I hire people, it's amazing, I hire people in Muslim countries all the time. <clears throat> in Pakistan, in Egypt, I hired a guy once in Gaza. I said, you know, I'm in Jerusalem. I said, your money is good with me. You know? And I think even one of the times I hired a guy in Gaza during a war, wow. and he didn't care. He's like, I need the money, whatever you need. So he was the most talented person. I'm willing to hire him. I prefer, I personally prefer to hire people as close to um, first world countries as possible. So many times I've hired people in the States or Australia or Canada that will do the same job for $20 that somebody else in Russia would do for $20. So if I have a choice between Russia and America, depending on the type of work, I try to hire an American. For example, for the t-shirts, I had a graphic designer. She was somewhere in the States. She must have made well over 100 designs for me, and I paid $5 a design. That's what I said. I posted the project. I said, I want 20 designs. I'm willing to pay $5, so $100. And who wants it? And this woman said, I want it. And it was just variations. So like I gave her the template, I said, for example, sewing is my therapy. I said, here's a list of other hobbies. I want you to make all the variations for me. And I'm willing to pay $100 for 50 designs or 20 designs or whatever it is. So if I have a choice, I'll take her. Or it really depends on how talented the person is. It doesn't matter to me. Like my book, <clears throat> the design for my book, I ran a contest. And I ended up hiring a Muslim in Bosnia. He was just the best person for the job. It didn't matter to me where they are. I, it matters how they communicate, how good their English is. Don't ever talk with the guys in India on the phone. I, I type with them, no problem. We're going back and forth. Everything is fine. The guy's like, I have to call you. So he calls me at home. I don't understand. <laughs> so get back on the, on the chat. Anyhow, we'll talk a lot about that in the course. Fiverr versus Upwork. Totally different. Fiverr are set jobs. All of that. Don't do anything on Fiverr that's not a set job with feedback. So let's say somebody says, I'll make a 3D image of your book cover. $5. If they say, I'll do anything you want for $5. Or I'll give you a, a custom made gig. So that you'll say, well, I want this, this, and this. Now you're, you're paying $150. You don't know if the, he's the best person for the job. They don't have feedback for that type of job. That's when you go to Upwork. Upwork, you just post what you want, and then you get bids on it, right. or you just say you get bids on it. You can invite people as well. All right. So this we had a whole conversation about, so I'm going to keep going. Here are some examples of page back. Here's Facebook. This is one of the ads for the T-shirt. So you can see I spent twenty-six thousand dollars running the ad. I reached 613,000 614, people and had conversions or sales, so 4,023 sales. So you can see I had a nice little spike there, and then went regularly, this was through a few months of selling a t-shirt. So if my cost per sale was $6.60, and I made an average, so the shirts that I showed you before was selling through the T-Screen marketplace, so it's paying them a fee. But I was making an average of $15 a sale, $14, $14 to $15 a t-shirt. So I was bringing in about 
$11.50 a sale. So when you have something like that, you can spend $26,000 because every sale is covering the cost of the advertising. You understand? So I didn't spend $26,000 in one shop. Mm -hmm. Every day, I would see how many t-shirts did I sell, how much money did I spend on advertising. Did I make a profit? Did I not make a profit? And as long as the traffic is cheap enough, look, that's a lot of people that I reached, then it's worth going with it. It's like coming up to four cents a, a hit. Yeah, it'll be in the, in the statistics somewhere here. But in other words, that's a relatively low cost of... And that's the idea. And this, this was a very targeted audience. I'm, I, I'm not sure that I remember. And then you take the 4,000 times the... Well, how much would the t-shirt teach? Selling an average of $22 with... So I, did, I, I made it $26.5, $27. So you, I don't have a calculator. You have to figure that out. It's a lot. It, this, but this is an example of how it works. About a quarter percent of your quarter, it's one hundred forty-eight thousand dollars in revenue. <clears throat> so you paid twenty-six thousand dollars for that revenue. Mm -hmm. so That's how you do. So your your marketing costs were twenty-five percent. Makes sense. On average, it was. And the wholesale cost is twenty-five percent, and I'd usually keep around fifty percent. So, so hmm. we're going to have a whole course, a whole module on just Facebook advertising. Hmm. I've done a lot, a lot of Facebook advertising. I was invited to Facebook's uh, headquarters here in Tel Aviv mm. and given a tour. And the guy said to me, eat something. They had like all this food all over the place. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm really not hungry. He said, you paid for it. Eat something. <laughs> <laughs> so I took a bunch of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> T-shirt. It's very funny. They had a wall just like this. And he said, sign your name. I said, why? He said, it's the Facebook wall. <laughs> very cute. Okay, so here's an example. This is also from Facebook. This is the same $26,000. So you can see I had the campaign set on $10 a day, here's like $20 a day, $5 a day, and I can see how much each conversion was. The expensive conversions, these I had to stop at some point because it's costing me too much money. And here I've got the cheaper conversions. So we're going to go through all of this, break everything down for you. SEO, search engine optimization. So this is organic. <coughs> what we're looking at, paid advertising. This is organic advertising. So here's an example of getting your website ranked first. So let's say, for example, um, I was ranked number one for Make Money Online. I type in Make Money Online. My website comes up selling this course. The course will sell day and night. You spend money in order to get the organic results. Because you have to have links, you have to have articles, you have to have websites that are linking to your website and websites that are linking to other websites. I'll just tell you one of the things that I was doing back in the old days, which you can't do anymore, is I was building private blog networks. So I would buy a server, let's say in Canada, I'd buy three or four servers, and build a bunch of websites and link them to another server in Australia. And link them, and link them, and link them. And I owned all the websites. Uh -huh. And then you'd find someone else that had their own private network, and you'd start sharing with them. So because you built a network, and they have a network, and then another person has a network, and all of us were linking together, sending traffic to each other, and that's how we were ranking so high. I'd rank for just about any keyword, anything you want to search for, jobs. At one point, I was number three for jobs. Um, then Google said, hey, we're going to stop this stuff, and they figured out, figured out how to find uh -huh. this stuff, and they had to stop it. But to get to that point, I had, to, I had a team writing articles. I had guys in Africa. This is the funniest thing. I just pictured people sweating in a hut writing articles for me. And uh, they were writing, I don't know, 10 cents, 30 cents an article. The English wasn't very good, but it didn't matter and just pumping out articles, building this whole crazy thing. Okay, AdWords is paid advertising. So AdWords, so for example, if you typed in Miami Dentists, the results here are SEO. The results over here are paid for. So these also have a certain level of SEO, meaning somebody has to click on the ads 
If they don't click on the ads, you start moving lower and lower and lower. These top ads, not only do they cost a little bit more money, people also have to click on them. We'll have a whole module about AdWords. Here's another example. This is, <clears throat> this is called the Content Network. So over here, these are ads in the search results, and these are ads that people are running on their websites. You've probably seen on this little arrow over here, mm -hmm. ones that it's running through AdWords. <clears throat> people are paying and putting up the ads. Twitter, so you can see this on my Twitter account. So I had 25,000 and a half followers on Twitter. I don't post very often. The last thing I posted was this article for President Trump. <clears throat> How did I do this? The same way I do everything, I found a little trick. And it was some software that started following people on Twitter. And then people said, oh, you're following me? I'll follow you back. And at some point, I had 35,000 people following me on Twitter. And I said, you know, I don't even like Twitter. It just annoys me. So I found some, plug some Chrome plugin that unfollows everyone. So I installed it. I unfollowed all 35,000 people. 10,000 of them dropped me, and 25,000 are still there. So now somebody comes in, who's this guy per rock? 25,000 people following him on Twitter. It's just, you know. For show, but looking at Barack Holman, I don't post anything. Okay, questions. We've basically finished. I'm going to go over the course. Does anybody have a question before I talk about what the rest of the course is going to be? Okay. Yes. Oh, you do have questions. I mean, what I guess what I'm wondering is um, like how. How much dedication I have to put on to this? Because it sounds like there's so much to learn that I have to actually like dedicate time to that, right? Yeah. So in like, the beginning, you have to dedicate time. How do I make a decision to like actually taking on this and like saying, okay, I'm gonna go for it, or like you know, it's not for me. Um, like it's like how much of that? Like what's that stretching period? I have to go and you know jump into the water. Well, the the next class is on Wednesday. They have to Wednesday to figure it out. <laughs> that I understand, but um, that's how much time. Is it free? No, no, no. I'm saying like how much is the time that you have to? I'm sorry, does it need to put put yourself to into work? How, how long did it take you? Get it's going to take you probably a month. It's going to take time. A month. Time. Let's oh, say a month. I, I don't work uh, 40 yeah. hours a week. So let's say a month working three or four hours a day on it. Yes. Or, you know, or what? So you find a product that's going to work and you have the whole system set up. Set up. It takes work. But just like everything, once you do it the first time, it gets easier and easier and easier. The more experience you develop, the more skills you have, the easier it gets. But now we have more questions. Do you have another question, Abram? Uh, what is Twitter? <laughs> oh my gosh. Twitter yeah, is a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> No, People have. write um, 140 characters, and I don't know why it's so popular. It's just, it's Sorry. just, it's called social media. Social media. People writing stuff. Do you do you use this to bring more sales? Yeah. No, I've never made any money from Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> but I've spoken at conferences. I speak to internet. Marketing conferences. So right away, people say, "What's your Twitter account?" They always put it in the in the flyers and the brochure. So I had to have an impressive-looking Twitter account. So I'll write here. I'm speaking at this conference, and everyone say, "Oh, 25,000 people." You gotta listen to Barack Obama speak. <laughs> what? It's a bunch of nonsense. In my opinion. I did notice okay. that yes. when I was looking through what I did, that people put in fake reviews. Oh, sure. There's like, I went to Airbnb Pro. I joined a few other groups, and I'm like looking at them. They have like like 30 really great reviews. And they're you probably short. hire some company in India to make fake reviews. No, no, no. They, they pay somebody, yeah. and then to make believe they stay there, and they put it in, and they stay there. They didn't stay there. They put, oh, great, fabulous, post, wonderful. And that guy has like, he only started six months ago, and he's got 30 reviews. It's almost impossible. Like, He's been renting at his apartment every three days, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, it makes him money. But it makes, him, it makes him look good. Yeah. 
Yeah. Anyone have some question? I just noticed that. Okay, so let's talk about the course. So this was the first session, which was a general overview of how this stuff works, the basic concepts, so you have an idea of intimate marketing, and when we get to this course, we get really deep into this stuff, very detailed. So you have to have the overview before we get into that. The next session, which is on Wednesday night, we're going to talk about Amazon, finding products and sourcing. So that's an entire session of how do you find the products, how do you, what, what are the criteria for finding a product, for example, you don't want to find a product that weighs five kilos, <laughs> because shipping that from the States, from China to the States will cost you a fortune. You don't want a product that's going to break anything with glass, electronics. You don't want a product that you're going to put on your skin. Because who knows what they did in China before it got to that nice American person and they put it on their skin. So there's criteria, there's ways of looking. We're going to go through Jungle Scout. I'm going to show you exactly how to narrow down the 45 million results to find products that sell, how to confirm the amount of traffic, the amount of sales. That's the first step. Then after that, we're going to go into detail. Many of these images are kind of backwards. We're going to go into detail on Amazon. How do you list the product? How do you advertise on Amazon? How do you optimize the listing? How do you deal with competition? Everything from buying the product in China, shipping it to the fulfillment center in the States or Europe or Australia, wherever it is, and the whole process, we're going to go through everything, everything in screenshots. Then the fourth session is an entire session on Upwork, talking about outsourcing, mm -hmm. how to negotiate, how to find people, how to hire them, how to deal with them. The whole thing, everything is covered. Then we're going to have a session on e-commerce. I'm going to talk about the t-shirt business, which you can still put t-shirts up. You don't have to do any advertising. You just have to make the designs, how to come up with the ideas, how to make the design, how to hire people and building your own e-commerce site. So getting off of the platforms and having your own site, everything you're going to need for that. Then we're going to have a whole session on Facebook marketing, which I showed you some examples of before. Paid, mainly paid Facebook advertising because organic Facebook advertising doesn't really work anymore. Anything that is, for example, viral is not organic. It's uh, somebody spends a lot of money to make a video, they made five different videos till they found the one that worked. So we're going to just focus on selling products on Facebook. How do you have a product? Like I showed you before, the t-shirts where I spent $26,000, but every day was making a profit. And the last session, we're going to cover all of the rest of marketing, which is AdWords, email marketing, SEO, anything else organic, and YouTube marketing. So for example, the eBay class, I sold almost entirely through YouTube marketing without even attending it. Then, so those are the sessions that we're going to have here, live sessions here. They're going to be bonus sessions. So you're going to get my entire eBay course. Huh. This is all included in the price of the course. The science of getting rich. I don't know if when you registered you were supposed to get a link. I'm not sure if it worked properly. I took the entire book, The Science of Getting Rich, which is a classic book and went through every single page. It's a Christian book, so I replaced all the Christian examples with Jewish examples. And you're going to get that. And I have this course, Viral Video, Video Factory. I sold hundreds of copies of this. This is how to make a viral video with almost no budget. So spending maybe $10, $20. I have at least 10 different examples of how to make viral videos. You're going to get that as well. Then, I don't know if you know the Dale Carnegie sales course. So I took the Dale Carnegie sales course here in Jerusalem. I was the top salesman in the course. And then afterwards, I took the entire course, which was eight weeks long, and I put it into an hour and a half session and recorded it, and that's here. So the entire sales process narrowed down to an hour and a half. And then you're going to get one more video from Bob Proctor. Because in the past, people would say to me, you know, I need some motivational video. So this is the motivational video to get your money mindset in place. So somebody asked me, how come you picked $1,000 for this course? The truth is, in the past, I used to say, I'm going to show you how to make $4,000. And I was going to start again. This, this year, I haven't given this course in five years. 
I was going to start and say, make $4,000. But my wife said to me, you know, people aren't going to believe you. Make it $1,000. Because $1,000 people can understand. $4,000 already seems like too much. I could have said $10,000. It's all, where is your mindset? What do you think you can get? So that's over here. Then they we're going to have a private Facebook group, which I've already set up. And in this group, everyone who joins the class, pays for the class, is going to be put into the group. And for three months, I'm going to be answering questions throughout the week. You post your questions. You can post videos. I'll post videos. Anything you need, it's all going to be in that group. Also, any videos, somebody says, I don't understand how does the shipping on Amazon work. I'll make a video, I'll put it up in the group. Everything will be there. So this class is for another three and a half weeks. And then for another two months after that, throughout the class I'll be answering questions in the group. And for two months after that, I'll be answering questions in the group. Okay, so that's the entire course. And here are some questions that people ask. How much money do I need to get started? So we've already talked about it. You can do it with even less than $100. But let's say around $100 to get started to buy your first product from AliExpress and send it to Amazon. And the cost of the course, you want to know how much do I make my first $1,000. You can do it within one or two months. You follow everything that I'm going to teach you here as long as you do the work. And it's work. For me, it's not so much work anymore because I know how all this stuff works. It's not a big deal. I know how to send things off. I know how to make them happen. But when you're just starting off, it's a real learning curve. There's new stuff. So I'm assuming within two months. Is it easy to make money online? If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. It's not easy, but it's possible. I've done it. I'm doing it. I know how to teach it. And I'm going to show you how to, teach, um, how to do it in this course. Can I really make money online? You don't know how many people send me messages on Facebook. Can I really make money online? Of course you can make money online. I'm, I'm living proof of making money online. This is also a question that people would like to say to me. If you're making so much money, what are you teaching this course for? Well, it's been five years since I taught, taught the course last time. The truth is I burned out from teaching the course. I just didn't want to teach it anymore. But now, I want to teach it again. So I'm back teaching it. It's not that I have to teach the course because I like to teach the course. This is one of my favorite topics. I can literally talk all day about internet marketing. And my wife doesn't want to hear about it. And most of my friends are not interested. So I make a course so I can stand here and have people pay me to talk about my favorite topic. Uh, what is kind of a volunteer schedule about here? Like, like this will be, will be finished before Comic Con. Three and a half weeks will be done. Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, we're done. Okay, those who can do teach, this is something that people will tell me all the time. But as you can see after the presentation tonight, I, you can't learn this stuff from a book. So if you're not doing it, then you couldn't teach it. Okay, now the cost of the course. So the cost of the course is 4,000 shekels. I give up to 10 payments, no interest, no additional anything. 399 shekels a month for 10 months. And basically, I'm trusting you to pay. Because it's not like I'm taking it through an Israeli processor, I'm doing it through PayPal. Yeah. Anyone who wants to pay in installments, I'll ask you to sign a little agreement that says I promise to pay for Rob, and I'm not going to be a, a not nice person and not pay him. Well, you mentioned $1,000 before, no? Um, it's not the right conversion. No, because it's, it's not. Not. This is, the cost of the course is always 4,000 shekels. If the shekel change is not my fault. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's $1,100 then. $1,100. That's the cost of the course. It's, a, it's in shekels. Anyone who needs a receipt will get a receipt with uh, the includes the VAT. Some people want to take individual classes, so I'm offering that for 600 shekels a class, and you can pay that each class in two installments. There's one class and you just want to take the Facebook class or you just want to take the Amazon classes, you're welcome to do that. But you can only attend up to two sessions. Mm -hmm. Anything beyond two sessions, it's the rest of the course. How many times have I given this course before? I've given it six times in the past. This is the last time I gave it was five years ago. All the material in this course is completely new. Nothing five years ago is relevant anymore. 
that's how fast things change. And if I give the class again a, a year from now, I'll have to rewrite some of the content. Most of it will probably be relevant, but for sure some things will have to be updated. Each session is like we had tonight, around two and a half hours, with a half hour of questions or breaks or whatever it is. I'm willing to go as fast as everyone wants, as slow as everyone wants, it just depends on the group. Um, <clears throat> This is a question I get all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, you, you, if you do the payment plan, we are. Right. If we do the payment plan. So if you're so good and I'm going to make all this money, I'll just take the course for free and pay you when I make all the money. No, but if we do the payment plan with you, <laughs> then. That's the answer. So the question, that's the answer. <laughs> Uh, the reason is, the, the truth is, I would be very happy for everyone to pay me from the money they're going to make from the course. But it's not up to me whether you're going to make money from the course. It's up to you. It's up to Hashem. Can you guarantee that I'm going to make money? All Parnassa comes from upstairs, downstairs, all around us. We have to make a vessel for the Parnassa, but it's, you know, not, that's where it comes from. Can anyone do what you're teaching? The truth is, you have. To, the answer is no. Not everyone can do it. You have to be willing to work hard. You have to be willing to learn new concepts. You can see from tonight's presentation, this was the overview. You have to be willing to learn new concepts. You have to be willing to work. And you have to be willing to persevere. I would say that's my biggest trick. I've been doing this for 18 years. I actually like it. So it's not like it's so much suffering for me. But there are always problems. There are always challenges. You'll have a product that's selling great, and someone will discover it, and they'll come in with another product and undercut you so cheap, you're like, what am I going to do? It's OK. You find a variation of the product. You find another product. You keep going. You always keep going. You can see from all the different businesses that I've worked over the years, the trick is to keep going and going. What else do you get when you join the course? You're going to get my experience. You can see I have a lot of experience with this. My mistakes. I mentioned some of my mistakes in the past. My time, obviously, standing here and in the group as well. My expertise and the skills and knowledge. I can answer anything related to what we talked about tonight. Anything, obviously, the, the tax stuff is not my area. Anything related to making money online. And I've gone into just about everything except for hacking. I've done everything. And even hacking, I know how to hire hackers, not for bad things, but for good things. I've had websites that were hacked into, and then I went to log into the site, but I couldn't get into the site. So you need a hacker to hack into the site so you can get back in and clean it up. <clears throat> OK. Any more questions? Yes. How much time do you reckon we need for the homework? So, <clears throat> I don't give homework. I'm going to show you the lesson, and your job is to do it as soon as possible. It's really up to you. The only homework is the bonus sessions, to watch them. You don't have to spend a lot of time. It's really, you're going to find something, and you're going to say, this is what I'm going to focus my energy on right now. All of this is recorded. I'm recording on my camera over there. It's also going to be live. There's some people in the States that, that want to join the course. It'll be live for them. I'll be in the, in the group. So if you feel like, OK, I learned all about Amazon. I'm focused on Amazon. Now you're talking about all that other stuff. I'm not ready for that yet. It's fine. You'll sit here. You'll ask questions. You'll go back. You'll watch the videos. You'll post the questions in the group, and I'll be there to help you. So you do it at your pace. You have to do stuff. You have to start right away. If you don't, it'll just be an intellectual exercise. But I mean, for someone who is working full time, yeah, like that's that's why I'm asking, like, how much? You don't need a lot of time. Do you this. think you should do an hour a day? <laughs> Half an hour a day doesn't have to be long. Okay. Let's let's say we're talking about product research, which would probably be the first place we're going to we're going to come with Jungle Scout. You're going to start going through Jungle Scout. You could do it on your phone. They have a mobile site, so whenever you have a break, you're in the bathroom, whenever you have time, you get on the site and you go through it. And really, that's what I do. T-shirts, 
researching t-shirts, you just go through the sites and check and check and check. But not when you have time. It's not like you have to sit down and have a dedicated block for it. The main thing is that you do stuff. That when I show you something, you go and do it. And when there's something that's already for a later stage, you save it for the later stage, and I'll be there. Just three months is enough time to get to the later stage. If, if really needed, we'll make it three and a half. They'll extend it by a couple weeks in the group. Just make sure you do the stuff. That's, that's the trick. Okay, so everybody that's here was registered, and I have hopefully the right phone number and the right email for you. So you're welcome to call me or contact me, and I'm going to make an effort over the next few days to contact everyone. Don't show up to the next class without contacting me first, because the next class is just for people who pay for the course. And the next class is on Amazon. Thank you for coming, everyone.